I'm Marion Lloyd and I'm Sally's, Sally Nichols's publisher at Marion Lloyd Books. And when I first read her manuscript, I knew from her agent who told me about it that it was about a boy who's dying. And I thought, do children, which is my audience, want to read about dying boys? I'm not sure. Maybe this is an adult book. But um, anyway, of course, I started to read it. And I thought immediately, wow, this young writer can really write. I love the voice of this boy. Um, but I wasn't in love with it. I wasn't immediately sort of emotionally sort of engaged with it, although I was very impressed by it. And I um, had a day at work and I was on my way home and I was sitting on the tube station at Euston Square, which is where I get on, and it's one of those tube stations where you have to let different kinds of trains go through because I needed a Hammersmith train. So I was um, sitting on a bench at the tube station waiting for my train and I had a good few minutes so I was reading quite a lot, not just quickly, and I suddenly got to the part where Felix dies. And to my total astonishment, and it was so not like me, I started to weep. I didn't just sniff and have a little tear. I just, tears poured out of my eyes. I was so surprised. I didn't kind of know, feel that was going to happen. And it was such a shock. And at that very moment, the train pulled into the station. And I was thinking, oh, is that a house with, oh my God, it's my train. And I sort of gathered up my shopping bag and my umbrella and the manuscripts are falling all over the place, stumbled onto the train. And just as the door was shut behind me, I realised I'd left my handbag on the bench. Oh God, you know, my life was in the handbag. I'm an idiot, you fool. So I couldn't get off. So I had to um, get to the next station, leap out, rush across the platform, wait for a train coming back the other way, and um, jump on that, get back to Euston Square, run to the bench, no handbag. But um, there was a woman sitting on the bench and she said, oh, have you lost your handbag? Somebody just handed it in. And some nice man had seen me bumbling my way onto the train in, in tears and given it to the station master. And I just thought it was, it was incredibly lucky. Um, and then <laughs> I went into the station master's office, which was very interesting. It was like a cave surrounded by TV monitors and all these screens. It was very, very dark. And in the middle of the cave was this giant hairy troll who was the station master. It was very nice. I don't think he'd ever been out of his cave. And I said to him, I was very embarrassed because I thought, you know, I'm quite a sort of sensible, intelligent woman who doesn't leave her handbag lying around the place. And I said, the only reason this happened is because I'm a publisher and somebody sent me a story which moved me so much that I just, it made me cry and the train came and I left my hair back behind. Um, and he was very kind and he said, that's very interesting because I'm writing a novel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well done, good luck. Um, and then I, I finished the book and I went into the office the next day and I just knew I desperately wanted to publish it. And I'm glad to say that we did. And the all my publishing colleagues, the first people who read it after me, absolutely felt exactly the same way. That here was a book that spoke not just to children but to but to adults. And the one thing I think that was the most one of the most powerful things for me is when I put it down at the end, you know, tears in my eyes, I just thought, death, yeah, we're all gonna do it. What is there to be frightened of? And I thought that was such a powerful idea, a life-changing idea to get from, from a story. And it, was, it is an absolutely exceptional story.